what's going on guys welcome to another video and in this video i'm going to talk to you guys uh, continue uh, talking about set function set methods that are available in python okay so in the last video we saw some basics of uh, sets right how to create one how to use how to convert uh, list and tuples into sets and all of that and some basic methods that are available in it like the pop function adding values to it checking whether the set for theory and all of that works and all of that now what we are going to do is we are going to actually run the set methods that are available some basic ones like union intersection are available and all of that okay first things first we need some sets right so what I'm going, so what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is I'm just creating some sample sets like this N P N one N two N seven and all of that. Why these numbers? Just random numbers. Don't worry too much about it. Just some random numbers. They don't mean much. Okay. Now we have some sets with us to work with. Now let's actually get to the fun part of it. First thing that we can do is if you have two sets, you can actually join them together and how do you do that we call set we call it set union set union right when you join two sets in mathematics you can do that here and how do you call it is by saying some set equals a new set dot union the method is called union and here you have to pass in some other set as an input so if i were to pass uh, and uh, if i were to pass uh, n2 as the input to n1 and print n3 Okay, check this out. N1 has one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and N2 has one, two, four, and eight. Whereas this entire thing has one, two, three, four, five, eight. Meaning it's a merger of these two. And if there are any repeating elements in both the sets, they are just discarded and they are taken only once, right? And there you go. This is your set union. On the other hand, there's another way to write up, write this, and that is using some of the operators that are available. Uh, some of the operators are available like for instance if you want to say uh, union of n1 and n2 all you can do is just put a pipe symbol in between and there you have it n1 and n2 these are ex uh, these are both the same operators these are called set union set union set unions you can either use this or this whichever one you find it find it con convenient right so just for uh, completion I'm let me run this and there you go it repeated again cool likewise if you're not talking about unions what's the next thing that is obviously we might look at intersections now here we join the sets now we want to figure out what are the common elements between the set now if you were to look at it manually the common elements are one two one four right that's pretty straightforward now let's actually cop uh, let, now let's actually try it out so let me print it out and this is set intersection set, set intersection and I'm going to call it n4 I'm calling it n4 I'm going to call it n4 okay and instead of union I'm going to call and the function name I mean the method name is called intersection by the way uh, don't uh, can get confused if I were to say function method interchangeably it's a, the correct thing is actually a method here um, and it's kind of like a force of habit that I kind of m mismatch and say function and method interchangeably. The correct thing is intersection is actually a method and not a function. All right. But anyway, you know what? Method and functions are very similar in many, many ways. Anyway, go. I don't want to get into that. Let's get back to the business. So there you go. If you type n1 dot intersection n2, you're actually uh, trying to find the common elements between these two. Now, if you run this little fellow. There you go. As we thought, the common elements 1, 2, and 4, they got printed nicely. Wonderful. Now what else you can do is that you can do the same operation just by changing the sign. And here, what you need to do is put an AND sign. Ampersand sign. Here it's like N1 or N2. Here it's N1 and N2. So we are just picking out elements that are common between N1 and N2. And that's what this implies over here. And there you go. It works out just fine. Likewise, there are a few more things that you can work with. There's another one is like disjoint set. Check. If you want to check if a set is disjoint, let's say, 
one thing that you can do is check if the intersection set and see if it is an empty set or not that's one point if there's an overlapping set or something you can you'll definitely get to know that another way is like if you want to get this if you want to check if this is a disjoint set or an overlapping set by just by uh, commands it's far it's easy what you can do is use the print statements for instance if I were to print let's check this out n7 is 3579 and if I say n7 dot is disjoint n2 let's see are they disjoint yeah they are because no they have no common elements so when I come use this method is disjoint and pass n2 it the method will check if there are any common elements between n7 and n2 if there are then it's not disjoint it will give false if there are no common elements then it will give true and let's check it out for ourselves and there you go it says true cool now that's that and if you want to check if two elements are like uh, supersets if two sets are like subsets or superset there are commands for that all right and let me say there are methods for that and it's just like this disjoint and they call is superset or subset so what i'm going to do let me copy these and paste it over here and check this out for you guys so this is super set super set and this is a subset right and there you go now let's check it out what we're saying is if we're checking if n is a, n is a super set of n1 that is what we are checking right essentially we're check, checking if n is actually a super set of n1 meaning if n1 all the elements of n1 are present in n are they yeah they are so this should return as true and this one should return as false because because uh, it's the other way around n has all the elements of n1 so n is n1 is actually a subset right so if we run this what will we get we get true true false uh, okay i think this might be a little bit confusing so let me comment this out i'll comment this out and i'll comment this out i'll comment this out too and for now i'm going to comment this out all right and this here you go it says true and false meaning n is actually a superset of n1 true n1 is a superset of n1 n no it's not clearly n1 has more values and there we go there you go and not only that if you want if you want to check the other way around if a set is actually a subset you just you just use the method is subset and that is it and clearly clearly you know what the answer is but just for the sake of you know not for the sake of it just for completion and to get uh, to believe this completely there we go n is actually a sub n is actually a superset of n1 so it's not a subset so you get the value false and there you go this is true huh i wonder if i had this during my uh, during my undergrad or much earlier younger classes i wish this feature was available or at least i knew how this was available working with mathematics would have been really fun <laughs> i could have found a lot of answers very quickly with all the sets and all of that yeah, it would have been really easy at least the assignment part of it not that i didn't do that i would have done that anyway but this was this was fun so if you're if you're like any young kid watching you know <laughs> you get to know this likewise i'm just stopping it here but i'm pretty uh, and i'm sure that there are like plenty of other functions that are available that are, that are in python that you can work with for sets and all of that and they are wonderful and they have a lot of users you can check it out last thing i'm going to tell you guys before leaving is called the is called a frozen set frozen set see essentially what we did in all the sets in the past two videos including this one is that uh, we noticed that we can add elements remove elements or change elements from sets and all of that right so that way we know that set is actually mutable meaning you can go and change the values whenever we want right so there is this particular class of sets called as frozen set so that which means that you can't change the values for instance uh, p over here let me say fp meaning for uh, not for, um, frozen p let me call it frozen p is actually frozen set p all right when i do that and i when i print frozen p and then type p and i type this out check it out ignore this false and true and you have this value called frozen set all right with the set name over here and if you clearly notice this frozen set 
okay has a bracket around it indicating that this entire thing is locked meaning you can't go and change earlier whenever you try to look at sets or sets or list or tuple you just have a normal bracket around them but this one has an entire name around it thereby indicating that hey buddy you can't go and change it right and it clearly says it still comes under the class of set but this is a separate uh, subclass in that regard a special case in that regard why because if you take a frozen set and try to uh, let's say add let's say add you don't have the facility to add entries to it if you try to add and uh, add another value to it let's say two f i mean let's say uh, 12 for instance you will get an error it says frozen set object has no attribute add so you can't delete any particular entries you can't add entries to it thereby it's completely frozen on the other hand you can you can add some values to it for instance uh, n not n n1 or something wait what did i do okay n1 or something and if you just print out frozen p let's see what we get look look at it even if we add some new entries to it it won't work maybe because we have new entries what i'm okay let me do this let me try this out let me write like the 14 comma 15 clearly these are no entries that are not available over here this will check our this will check it out and there you go you see this you see this even after i added these two entries in entries to frozen p it didn't work on the other hand if i were to create a new set like fp equals frozen frozen p fp all right now this might work check it out and there and there you go it now this works now what you have here is still a frozen set but the only difference is that the original frozen set value that we created that remains as it is what it happens is that these two set, the new entries are added to the frozen set and made into a separate new frozen set and made made over here that way you have some kind of protection uh, to avoid any mutation over here so that's the point if you want to avoid mutation let's say use frozen sets and proceed with them carefully if you if you're like heck i don't want to do bother anything about mutation i just want to use it as it is and i want mutation to explicitly happen then use use normal sets yeah so with this i think you might have enough ideas as to how to implement list tuples and sets so far in the next video we'll talk about uh, dictionaries and after that i think it's high time we go into loops and start working with them all right so with that being said that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time